Welcome to the presentation of this uh, scientific paper uh, titled Optimal Setting of Fast Active Power Controllers uh, for the Nordic Case. The authors of these papers are um, Marta Noemi Acosta, Francisco González Longat, Sergei Densiskiu, and Helila Estrekova. I am sorry if I mispronunciate those names. Okay. Um, um, I am Francisco González Longat, uh, Professor Francisco González Longat, and I will be the presenter. Uh, this paper is basically the collaboration between Mexico, Norway, and Ukraine. Um, well, let's let's start with this uh, interesting paper. Okay, um, as you must be aware, the Nordic power system is basically the interconnection between uh, the Scandinavian countries, uh, basically uh, Norway, Finland, and Sweden. Okay, however, um, as all the modern power systems, they are facing several challenges, and one of those very important challenges is a uh, expected reduction in the total system inertia. Uh, this is basically caused because uh, Norway has a, a very interesting integration of wind power plants, uh, and also. Uh, Sweden and, and, and Finland. Also, there are some closure of thermal power plants in, in Sweden and nuclear power plants in, in Sweden, okay? And, and also, all the Nordic power system has an increase on the capacity of interconnectors using HBDC. As a consequence, um, it's expected that the total kinetic energy in the Northern Power System will be between 120 and, 100, and 145 watts per sec, uh, gigawatts per uh, seconds, uh, between 1 to 19 percent of the time. Okay. Um, it's, it's necessarily to just develop some uh, methodologies in order to um, solve the problems related with the low inertia. One of these, one of these options is developing new controllers for power electronic converters based technologies um, um, like battery energy storage or, or wind turbines or even HPDC interconnectors. Okay, one of these uh, control systems is what we call the fast active power injection absorption, that is called FAPIA. Um, FAPIA is basically a frequency sensitive controller that has two main components one control action that is proportional to the frequency and one control action that is uh, proportional uh, proportional uh, proportional to the rate of change of frequency okay this this FAPIA is a very fast controller and it's ensuring that we have full response within one second okay uh, and this paper, what it's doing is presenting the concept of FAPIA controller, and then we we, we would like to uh, obtain the the settings for this FAPIA controller uh, for the case of the low inertia scenario in the Northern Power System. Okay, finding the current settings of the FAPIA controller is a problem, basically because um, we need to we need to optimize those controllers in order to fulfill one objective. In this paper, we are using optimization. We are formulating the problem as a time domain simulation combined with optimization. And basically for optimization, we are using the classical interior point optimization algorithm. Okay. Um, well, let's start with the description of what is FAPIA. FAPIA is basically the combination of several actions, uh, control actions, proportional integrative action, and the idea is that we can absorb or um, inject uh, active power to the system in order to compensate any kind of uh, power imbalance inside the system, creating uh, a frequency response. Okay, FAPIA has basically two control actions. What the one that we control, uh, we call the proportional control action, and one that we call the derivative control action. The proportional control action, uh, some some papers they call the troop action. Okay, what we have is a dead band inside the dead band. 
band, the frequency response of the controller is zero, there is no uh, power. However, if we have a uh, under frequency uh, event, the, acti the, the FAPI um, proportional action will increase the active power production trying to compensate the power imbalance. On the other hand, if we have an increase of the active uh, on the frequency, the controller will try to make the, the device to consume active power from the system, absorbing power, uh, power from the system will try to keep the balance between generation and demand. Of course, there are some saturations because if we are using power electronic converter technology, there is a maximum limit on the active power that can be absorbed or released, okay? Um, the main, the main, the main indicator, the main parameter for this controller is the K, uh, KP, and that is the proportional gain constant. Okay, changing K, uh, changing K is equivalent to change the slope of this curve over here. However, in real life, in real life, we have power converter, and the effect of increasing the constant is creating and reaching some saturation. Okay. On the other hand, we have the derivative action. The derivative action find the motivation in the classical response of the synchronous generator, where K represents the inertia of the system and the FDT represents the rock off. Finally, there is a final option and it's combining all the uh, actions. Okay, FAPIA has the, port the possibility of combining the proportional action and the, integra and the derivative action, and that is what we are planning to do here. Okay? Okay. Now, what we want to do is optimize the parameters of the FAPIA. Mainly, what we are trying to get is the proportional constant, the derivative constant, and the volume related with the FAPI contribution. To do that, we create an optimization problem where the decision variables are the constants that uh, we discussed before. Of course, those constants must be inside some boundaries, and we define boundaries, upper and lower boundaries for those, uh, for those values. Okay. Regarding the objective function, we in this paper we established two different objective functions. One of them is minimizing the steady state frequency, and the other one is minimizing the match, the minimizing the deviation of the minimum frequency. Okay. What I will discuss right now is the simulation results. The, the, Nor the Nordic power system is basically the interconnection of the, uh, these three different areas. We have used a very simplified uh, system frequency response model based in the governor, turbine, and the rotating generator plus the mass. The first, the first, uh, uh, the first set of simulation is basically a sensitivity analysis. We make changes on the inertia and we evaluate the changes on the main indicator in the system frequency. As you can see over here, there is a minimum there is a minimum value of inertia, and when this inertia is very low, the Rokoff tr uh, try to be high, and also the frequency go very deep until, for instance, in this case, 48.4. However, if we increase the inertia like we have the levels today, well, the minimum frequency is only 49.4, and the Rokoff is very low, it's around uh, 0.3. 21 hertz per second. As you can see over here, it's not only the main indicators. This is the minimum frequency and this is the rock off. It's also the way that the system frequency response happened. If we start to reduce the inertia, one of the consequences is that we are reducing the damping, the capacity of the system to behave. If you look over here, you can see that we can have very oscillating, very oscillating conditions if we start to reduce the inertia so much. The next step was the optimization process. Uh, the optimization process is divided into set of simulation. The first one was, uh, was uh, created in order to minimize the, sta the steady state frequency. In this case, the objective was minimizing the, the steady state frequency until reaching 49.9 okay, hertz. 
after the after the the optimization we obtain three values one of them is the proportional action the other one is the the derivative action and finally we got the volume relative to the active active power production okay we run a time domain simulation in order to, to demonstrate that we are fulfilling the requirements and the requirement was that we are optimizing this in order to obtain 49.9 uh, uh, hertz at a state state frequency and this is demonstrated in this figure in the next figure we use the second uh, the second uh, objective function and that is minimizing the frequency deviation the minimum uh, frequency deviation we as we define a value of 49.5 hertz that that is above the um, under frequency load shedding after the simulation we obtain the values for the proportional constant for the derivative constant and for the um, volume of active power controller then we run a time domain simulation in order to demonstrate that the conditions of the objective function and constraints are fulfilled and as you can see over here the minimum frequency is reaching 49.5 and that was the objective well, we would like to conclude this, this presentation, just presenting some remarks. Basically, in this paper, we present a sensitivity analysis that, that allow us to identify some possible uh, um, uh, instabilities in terms of frequency for this system. Then we present a very basic optimization process in order to define the constants and the volume of the FAPIA controller, and two different objective functions were presented in this paper, and the performance of the of the proposed method was present uh, uh, demonstrate with two different simulations finally we would like to close this presentation giving thank you to uh, conacit in mexico for supporting the research of marta noemi acosta that she is visiting uh, the university of southeastern norway thank you very much for for your time that's all <laughs>